Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm here with Paige and Hannah from Bravo's Summer House. Uh, ladies, how are you both doing today? We're, We're doing well. I'm a little hungover. Right. We're, no, I, okay. I'm a little bit of a mess too. I feel like we're all a little messy this morning. Yeah. Who isn't messy? But Danny, I almost feel like your voice is sexy today. Like it's like. Because <laughs> I have, I'm congested, Hannah. I feel like Phoebe <laughs> and friends when she's like got the cold and she's got the sexy voice, but I feel hundred percent fine. I'm just, you know, it's you know early here feel... on the West coast and my allergies are bad in the morning. True. What makes me feel better when I'm having a bad day is just your Jessica Simpson post. That's what gets me through the day. Yeah. <laughs> Now, are you a Jessica Simpson fan? A hundred percent. I read her book and so um, what, she got me through some tough times. What, Hannah, would you say is like your favorite Jessica era? Like, were you a newlyweds fan? Did you like the music? Like, what was, what do you attach yourself to with Jessica? I love the music, but the newlyweds showed me that like she can laugh at herself and she's just s such a silly person that also happens to be drop dead beautiful and... um She's great. I stand uh, her till day I die. Paige, yeah. what about you? What did, did you watch Newlyweds? Of course. I feel like Newlyweds was like one of the first times I was like, is what is reality TV? And her circa like take my breath away uh, is my vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a making of the video clip where they're like throwing doves at her during that video shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing. <laughs> She's just getting attacked by doves and they're trying to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love her. She's also like a billionaire. I think I people like forget about that, like how yeah. successful she really is. Yeah. Do you guys watch reality shows now and sort of look at them differently? I mean, if you were to go back and watch Newlyweds now after doing the Summer House experience, like Paige, would you uh, view it differently? Or, or are you thinking about like, where's the camera or where's the mics? Hannah and I always joke about this, like that yeah. we're professional athletes, because when we watch reality shows, it feels like we're watching like tape, yeah. like, <laughs> like we just know the behind the scenes stuff, I guess, or like we just, yeah, I just we watch, watch it, it in very such a different way. Yeah, because in reality TV, you're always gonna be put in certain situations. It just ends up that way. So we'll be like. Is she going to handle it? And she nailed it. She nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, she missed her mark. She missed her mark. So we literally watch it like ESPN where yeah. we know like kind of the setups and if people are doing their job or not. <laughs> and I, wa I watch it in a, a similarly ESPN-ish way when I'm recapping because I'm like yeah. taking detailed notes and I'm like, I am so mad at Hannah right now. Or <laughs> like <laughs> and it's so crazy like to watch it and – just like to realize how humans interact. Like if you do something fucked up and you're just like, yeah, I did something fucked up. People like you more than like if you're going to defend yourself. But I feel like in real life, like with your <laughs> friends with no camera, you'd be like deny till you die kind of thing, you know, but on TV, it's different. I don't know. And with friendships, too, I always think like when I'm watching and I know some of the people on these shows, like on Vanderpump Rules or something, and it's like in real life, like I would never talk to that person again. Right. But, but <laughs> as, a, as an audience of these shows, like I'm expecting you all to talk to each other again. Yeah, and like, like, I, was, like uh, I was just talking to Giselle and Portia about this. They're like, tell me you're on Bravo without telling me you're, you're on Bravo. And Giselle's like, you yearly go on trips with people you hate. <laughs> <laughs> like who goes on beautiful trips with just people you hate? Oh my god! Uh, speaking of Giselle and Portia, what happened to Kate Chastain on there? But did was there an announcement of like why Kate left? I had like a phone call with Kate, and she was like, "I'm moving on from this opportunity, but you girls are great. Like I have some new stuff going on." But like Kate was the creator of the show. Kate was the one that had called me and been like, "I think you'd be great for this," and it was her concept. So like I am just like so thankful and honored to be a part of it. And then like Kate has some exciting things in the future, I believe, and that's what I've told. And me and Kate are very cool. Yeah. I love Kate. She had told me about it like way before it came out. And so I was so surprised that she was gone. And my only thought was that maybe she was like going back to below deck for a season then might come yeah. back. So do you think there's a chance she could come back? I do. I think like there's, we all love Kate and it just seemed like a situational thing that 
I just didn't know the extent of it. But um, we had so much fun together. And I just hope we all can hang out in real life one day because it's all been virtual, which is so weird. Right. Yeah. Is there a plan like when the world sort of opens up that you guys I mean, would do it in person? Or is it always going to be like this? Danny, this is the little show that could. They gave us like five episodes. And then they just kept like, they didn't really renew us for a new season. Just kept being like, hey, we got 10 more. Hey, we got 10 more. So we're just keep showing up until they tell us we have to send our equipment back. <laughs> I do see Hannah, though, like sitting at like a round table, you know, like I need that in my life. No, I know. I would sort of like to see it or maybe like a special occasion episode where it's like you guys are yeah. at, you know, a round table. Yeah. I love Portia too. Portia's the best. Isn't she the best? Yeah, I love well, Portia. Portia's like, she's just an icon. So when I first met her, I thought that she, I, I would get like nervous around her. Or she might be like kind of like too cool f- for everyone. Because she is. And she is the most smiley, goofy, silly, just happy person. Like sometimes we'll just make weird noises at each other just to make each other laugh. Like we become 12 year olds together and people, she's so easily like a princess queen and then just like a straight comedian. Oh, I love that. I was just reading she like signed this new uh, deal with UTA, I think, this morning yeah. and she's doing all of these, the a book project and, and all sorts hustling. of stuff. She's hustling. Sometimes she's like literally holding PJ while like, you know, call, telling her sister to do something while doing chat room and we're just sitting there like, I can barely remember what I had for breakfast this morning, yeah. but. Um, Paige, I'm curious, like, what are you, what are the things you want to do with this platform? I mean, obviously you're doing already so much. You guys have Giggly Squad going on and, um, you know, so many things, but in terms of like dreams of dreams, I like, I'm always Mm -hmm. so fascinated. You guys have this platform. It's like what down the road in five years is like, would be a dream of yours. Um, I would love to have a fashion line and I've like, I've talked about it so many times and like, I have so many vision boards and like things written down. And I just don't know what like my main thing would be. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just like put out a fashion line that's like, oh, here's like a leather jacket and a pair of jeans and like whatever. I wanted to have, like, you know how Morgan Stewart started and she just had like her Morgan Stewart sport and that was the thing. So I want to start at something like that where it's like all we do is body suits and then it like morphs into something else. Um, But I... I see myself like maybe being like a Victoria Beckham type fashion line one day. I was cracking up in this week's episode when uh, Hannah was fighting with, I don't know if it was Kyle, um, but you were upstairs and you were talking about your outfit. It was so funny. (laughs) <laughs> I, sometimes you just have to lighten the mood you right. know I'm like my friend is downstairs just annihilating people and like this is a set that I put together <laughs> you're welcome um, I was trying to figure out if tie-dye is in people were telling me because I was watching Bravo this past week and I was like everyone's wearing fucking tie-dye on the show and mm-hmm. people told me they wrote into me and they were like tie-dye is a thing now so is it a thing still Paige <laughs> I would say that like it was very big in the middle of quarantine mm-hmm. but as we move into the spring, I would say let it go. It must okay. be hard to watch like your outfit six months ago knowing it's not like prime trend right now. I, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about Sometimes that. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't know why I wore that. I don't know. You know, I but in the moment it. I was like, I love it. Yeah. Who do you think is like the best dressed on Bravo? Oh. Ooh. Mm. Okay, I, I actually do know this and she's not on anymore, but everything that Carol Radswell used to wear. I That's what I good. think. I yeah, think I, she, I think a lot of Carol's stuff was also a little bit ahead of its time in a weird way. Yes, like yes. I remember even yes. recapping, like people would write me and be like, what the fuck was Carol wearing? And then look, rewatching the episodes, it's like, oh, that's something that people wear now. And I, I feel like that might it. be like a New York thing too. Yeah. Like she's such a New Yorker and I feel like she saw trends before they hit like yeah. mainstream. Like in New York, if you're wearing what other people are wearing, it's like, okay. But if you're wearing different stuff, people are like, ooh, is she setting a trend? Yeah. Like I remember when the dad sneaker became really popular and I would see girls like wearing them around New York and I was like, that's disgusting. What are they <laughs> no. wearing? No, and then like a month later, I was like, I have every color. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, it looks like you have so many fucking clothes in that basement that you guys are in. I was like, let's go. And what's going on with Sierra's room? Does she never clean the room? Look. It's so messy. We were in a very intense co-working space with alcohol and violence. And I think that everyone needs to give everyone a little (laughs) pass of like mental health. I think Sierra had like been working so hard as a nurse, got here, was like definitely just wanted to relax. And cleaning her room was not part of that. 
And I respect this. Not priority. That makes sense. Um, Hannah, I want to talk about this Kyle situation. I didn't understand it. I was like, Hannah has lost it. Like, what is going on with that? Because we only saw a little portion of it. So I'm sure it lasted for much longer. (laughs) But it seemed to us that you brought up your dad. And then Kyle said something along the lines of like, well, why are you comparing? And then you got upset. Yeah. Well, I lost my damn mind. Um, I think what triggered it was when I was sitting there and he said, I've never said anything mean to you. That was when I I saw red. So that, that comment of when you got up, you think that was sort of almost like misplaced. Like you were mad about, you were just upset. Oh yeah, it, was, it wasn't about my dad, but it's also like, if people are watching, it's not about trash. It's not about one comment I made about him and Amanda. It's not about like me being messy. There's like a clearer, deeper thing. And um, I, he wasn't being open and admitting while he was actually mad. And that's why like, I just couldn't stand it. And then I was feeling like the whole, it's, it was just so funny that like, he was blaming me for like talking bad about his relationship with my like comment I made at the picnic table when up until that point I had not said shit I'd only been supportive and then you're watching him just vilify me the whole time in very general statements so like Hannah's a bad friend Hannah does this Hannah's lazy Hannah had coming at my career and it's like I couldn't take it anymore because I could hear what he was saying. Uh But then everyone's like, Hannah, calm down. You're being so mean to Kyle. When I'm like, if he calls me lazy one more time and acts like and bosses everyone around, like, I just don't like how he talks to people. And I had enough of it. And in terms of laziness, we were talking before we started recording, but you are doing two podcasts. And I don't know if people realize, like, because I know you're someone who edits and books and does all of that stuff. And I do that too. And it's a lot of fucking work and you're doing two podcasts. So I'm not trying to like gas you up a little bit because no. I'm still firmly team Kyle. My, my th- <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Firmly my- team Kyle, but I don't think there's a laziness there. Um, yeah. So my thing with Kyle is um, I, my stand up tour got t- canceled. I'd been spending all year preparing, preparing for a stand up tour. And then the stand up tour got canceled, but I still was like working so hard on creating the Giggly Squad podcast, having my podcast, you know, doing all my partnerships, preparing, writing, pitching new shows, getting auditioning for chat room. Um, my problem with Kyle is like the real issue is he just like really was trying to make me feel like his career is the most important in the house. We have to party when he wants to party. And if anyone doesn't listen to what he's saying, then it's like they get spoken down to. And if you watch Summer House, I've been cursed out by him multiple times and never stood up for myself. So this is the first time this season that I said, if I'm stuck in a house with this guy and he starts disrespecting me, I need to stand up for myself. And um, there's a lot of things that made me very angry that people didn't hear. But if it happened again, I would have been as angry. Like what? No, just that everything in my career I got because of him. And that's what really set me I think it's clear that it's there's like some sort of outside power struggle in terms of like, oftentimes I watch all of these shows and you can see that fame plays an issue with a lot of the fights, but obviously Bravo can't, can't say that, you know, people are fighting over things like fame or power. Um, And so it does feel like that to me. And I don't know if, obviously, like you said, maybe he thinks his career is the most important. Also, I think there's some element of him probably thinking he started this show and and he's the, he's the last one sort of standing. There's so much OG tension. And it's funny because like watching it back, I totally feel bad that I said, don't speak to me the way you talk to Amanda. Cause I felt like it hurt Amanda and that wasn't my intention. But other than that, I really don't know what I did to that man to get him to go around the house saying I'm manipulated, um, come at my friendship with Sierra. Like, but I'm being told by everyone that I'm so emotional when I'm like, what? (laughs) Like Kyle's crying and yelling and trying to destroy me the whole time. So I don't know if I'm clouded in my brain and I know that I made mistakes this season and I know that I've been super emotional because I couldn't leave the house and I missed Des, but like, I really did not um, fully understand his hatred towards me. Kyle really is turning into a big crier. He's cried like multiple times this season. I don't normally like Kyle, but I'm I am liking him this season. And Amanda too. I didn't previously like Amanda, and now I'm like loving Amanda. I don't know. You know, we change on a dime. You know, every five <laughs> minutes from now, I might feel differently. Um, Paige, what was your take on the the Kyle Hannah of it all? 
I have gotten into multiple fights with Kyle too, so I understand the way he fights. And I felt so bad seeing Hannah get so upset during the fight. And it really only shows how much she really cared. Like, she never wants confrontation. She never wants awkwardness. But, like, Hannah's a strong girl. And, like, you can't tell her anything. So, like, if she feels a type of way, she's going to speak up for herself. And really, like, obviously I have a friendship with Kyle. But my friendship with Amanda takes precedent over my friendship with Kyle. So I never wanted Amanda to feel upset. And I feel like a lot of the times I almost felt like I was being two faced because I was listening to Hannah, but then I was listening to Amanda and I have two such separate friendships with both of them. Like when I'm with Hannah, we're not talking about Amanda. And when I'm with Amanda, I'm not talking about Hannah. So it puts me very much in the middle because I love both of them for different reasons and we just have different friendships. So I tried to stay out of it as much as I could because I didn't want either of them to feel betrayed. Hannah, did you get mad at anything Paige said in like confessionals? Because there was a couple of times I think you had said something. Oh you know, yeah, this bitch called me immediately and was like, so you're not on my team. <laughs> that must get so awkward on friendships. I mean, it's like you see it's, something I, that you didn't know. I think said. I got this asked this question because I think that if I were Paige, I would have done the same thing because she knows that I am ride or die. I love her yeah. to death and I am will always forgive her for whatever she does because I know she's not coming from a bad place ever. But if she were to say Team Hannah, she'd have to deal with the wrath of Kyle and no one wants to have to <laughs> deal with that. Yeah. So Hannah was like, I save yourself. <laughs> I literally was like, I'm going down. Um, but um, yeah, the whole thing, it's interesting, Danny, to hear your perspective because like, I really want to know like, yeah, I have I see it so differently when I was going through it and, like, knowing the stuff that was said about me. Like, watching it, I actually didn't know that Kyle and Amanda, before I had even said anything in the car, were, like, premeditating saying that I talk about them when I hadn't. And that's when, like, I was like, oh, this was, like, a thing. You guys are trying to vilify me. And they took a little bit, and then it was like, Sierra, Hannah's, Hannah's like, manipulating you. I'm like, what, do you want me to be mean to Sierra? Like, what do you want from me? And I just also, felt like it was a... We- Also, like we live in a house where there is like multiple relationships. And I think the number one reason you watch reality TV is because you want to pick a side. You want people to have strong opinions. Yeah. So like if Hannah has a strong opinion, there's people that are going to side with her. And Kyle has a strong opinion. People are going to side with him. Also, what else are we talking about other than people's relationships? Like Des comes in yeah. and we're all going to comment on it. You know, Danielle's talking to a boy, a guy. We're going to comment on it. <laughs> Steven left on Lindsay's birthday. We're going to fucking that was comment wild. on it. Oh my it. God, that was so, so good. You know, I think their relationship is also kind of fair game to talk about. And but it's you know, okay. I, had opinions. But what's I really going on now? don't think I was ever talking about them. Like, I mean, I said well, I got really angry because I, I don't like how he speaks to people sometimes. And and that's the thing. Like people were trying to make it like it was an Amanda fight. When in the past, Amanda, whenever Kyle yells at me, Amanda always calms him down, tells me sorry. Um, it was just that one fight that she was like jumping in, supporting some n- nasty things that were said that I like got upset at her. And then I realized, no, 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 I'm not letting Kyle get in between like my friendship with Amanda. Uh, where are you guys now? Are you and Kyle still on bad terms? Um, so weird. Like we, you know, I apologize. I told him he's the greatest guy in the world and number one guy in the house. What happened there too? Wait, let's that. just back up for a second. What was that? Well, Danny. It's because he's not mad at me for any other reason than he wants me to bow down to him, suck his dick and say, you're the best. That's all the fight was. So it's very frustrating for me to hear that people are mad at me for other things when all Kyle wanted was for me to tell him he's the best. So I did. And that's the only way he would leave me alone and stop like literally going around the house. So all day was, telling me I'm was that person. was that genuine when you said you're the man? Because I thought no. it was genuine that you were saying. No. So that was just all bullshit. Well, no, it's not. The beginning was very real in that I didn't want fights and I didn't want anything. But like, you just I wanted just, to ease things. I just wanted everyone to stop fighting because Kyle would not stop going around the house saying terrible things about everything about me. So I'm getting heated right now, but it's been very frustrating. It just aired last night. And it's like, everyone's like, you're, you're so emotional and mean to Kyle. I'm like, I literally just said, don't talk to me. How you talk to Amanda? 
Well, I think it was just hard for the viewer because all we really saw was that that one really big, mo- we, there are two really big moments. That first one with the dad comment. And as the viewer, we only were, we only saw it go from zero to a hundred. And so we didn't yeah. see a lot of that conversation. Yeah. And then, and then, so the next scene, then when you're, when you're offering this, what, apology to Kyle that felt a little insincere so I think that could maybe be where the disconnect comes from well it was sincere in that he was never going to apologize because he didn't even admit that he was saying bad things about me when he literally said out loud I will destroy Hannah Burner." like that shit's real like watching it I didn't realize how much he hated mm. me and then I realized like wow you strategically made it look like I'm this crazy person who's coming at your relationship when that's not a thing I'm just standing up to this person who has talked down to me for years. And in the time I thought I was being like so strong. So it's hard to watch it and be like, wait, so now I'm getting spun on that I'm this mean person. I'm not going around the house talking about Kyle. You know, I didn't think you were mean. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean you were mean in any way. But um, no, but with the apology. I think you're a huge bitch. Thank you, Paige. <laughs> actually, I mean, I, if, anyway, um, I in the apology, I actually realized like Kyle's not going to stop the fighting. I, and I need to say sorry to the group because I actually really don't want the fighting. And then to Kyle, I knew all he wanted from me was to say, you're the most important in the house. You're the number one guy. And like, like, I mean, I, I don't have, I'm not the one who has the real like hatred. So like, I was able to be like, you're great. Like, and then I knew he'd leave me alone. Right. And like, it's it honestly the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> no, but I, I understand. I feel like I understand it better now because it was, it was confusing of how it went so quickly from one to the, the other, but it's because I like, I snapped like the dad. Com- I mean, everyone's focusing on the dad comment, but that was just after an hour conversation of fighting and yelling and me trying to quit the show four times, I said, um, wait, you were trying to quit the show four <laughs> times to explain that. No, I just was done. Yeah, like I was done. I was so done. Danny she tried to escape. A few I times. literally tried to leave. And then I was like, I basically said, um, like I basically was saying in general, like you're acting like you're my boss and you tell everyone what to do. Like I, wh- how hard I work, how long I sleep, how long, whatever. And um, it's funny, like even I said, Paige told them to turn the music down and he gets mad at Hannah. Like it was mm-hmm. Danny, mm-hmm. it was a nonstop thing that I couldn't control. Right. So I said, stop criticizing me like you're my dad. And then he was like, he kind of just made a dick remark. Like, oh, interesting. I'm in the same sense as your dad. And I was just done. And I don't even there's know also what a large, there's also a big age gap. Isn't Ky- is Kyle 40 now? Or he's he's 38. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like, um, I don't know. So you guys are not good now. I thought you guys were good now. Well, I, I was fine with him and I'm like, I, I'm great with Amanda. She's, she's sent me like a lot of nice messages. I sent her nice messages cause we really have no beef. Kyle, apparently Kyle never congratulated me about the engagement. Um, which I think is super weird. And then apparently, by the way, congratulations. Thank you, honey. (laughs) Um, But yeah, whatever. So that's classic. Like it's just, yeah. 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 Oh, the reunion will be good. Um, I gotta move on. I gotta move on to the Luke of it all. This was my practice. This is my practice. I'm excited. Round. I don't want to keep you guys forever, but I want to talk about Luke. I mean, I do want to keep you forever. Just get to the bottom of that Kyle stuff. Um, but the Luke of it all. What is his? What's going on with? What's going on with this music? What's going on with Luke's okay. music career? Okay. 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 What, Actually, what no, I'm that? done talking. Paige, you go. What the fuck go. is that, Paige? <laughs> no, I Paige, can't. You go. No, I can't. If I mean, I sort a... of love it because he is such a, like, a what they call a himbo. Like, we're... <laughs> It's I the only reason I love it is because like in when you're watching the show, it's such a like juxtaposition where we're just like, what are you talking about? So like, funny. what are you saying? You know, and like there was one part when he was like, I forget my own lyrics. I'm like, none of them make sense. Anyway, what it's so saying? good though. It's like so good. It's no, so he, good. He's Luke. He's, he's yeah. Himself. Like that's just him. It's so that's very him. I remember so very him here. Like, even though I wanted to have sex with him, he kept playing the guitar above the bedroom. And I was like, every time it takes a little piece of my soul away because I'm not a, I'm not a guitar girl. I'm not a guitar girl. Not it's my, my biggest pet peeve. If a guy yeah. is whipping out a guitar and like singing, it's just like, what do I do? Like, now? do you know how awkward you know? it is when people sing happy birthday to you? Oh, I hate you it. don't know what to do with your hands. Imagine when like, like Luke would sit down and like start singing his song to me. And I was, I'd be like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, our first kiss, he started playing the guitar. And I was like, I'm going to take this guitar. 
car, <laughs> throw it in the fucking pool, or hit you with it, and then maybe you'll kiss me. So yeah, it, it was. I love when somebody's fighting in the house and he's just on the fucking porch with the guitar or something, like, <laughs> singing about sexy smiles, and it's like, <laughs> what are you yeah. saying? What are you like, like suit happening? and tie? I'm like, what are you? Yeah, what are you saying? But in a weird but, way, it reminds me like I I have two. I have two older brothers who definitely would not do that. But, you know, sometimes like straight, this is going to sound sort of bad, but sometimes like straight white men, they just have like very simple minds and it's like, nothing's going, <laughs> n- this sounds so mean, but like nothing's like going, nothing's happening up there. You know? Yeah. That he's sounds very mean. much, Danny, no, he's very it. much always in his own world. Like he's <laughs> got his own things going on. Like, when I'm watching the show, I'm like, oh, my God, all he does is talk to himself and swear at himself. <laughs> yeah, he's having um, a full storyline with himself. In the upcoming episode, Kyle says that he it, Luke just wants to have power over women. Do you feel like that's true? Um, I feel like Luke's, Luke's stuff is complex. Like, I was... He was never ready for any type of relationship. And, like, everyone knew that. Um, I just thought I could have fun that one summer and have a cute hookup but it turned into this thing where I think he sometimes has trouble with like the sex versus the inti- emotional intimacy and I got stuck where like I think he was having sex with other people as was I but then like I was his emotional intimate like girlfriend where he would just call me every day and like he, he couldn't connect the two and I don't know what his past was that affected that but um he has some stuff he's figuring out and like I hope that he's finds happiness I think the timeline of all of that was hard for viewers uh especially like like super viewers who are on the blogs and everything like that, because it was like, we thought Hannah, you were with Des before going into the house, which you had clarified, excuse me, that it was like two weeks you guys had been dating. Yeah. Um, And I think it was confusing actually, because I wish Bravo would have let us know up front that you were talking to someone on the phone, you know, cause it was like, it was just the Des of it all was ignored. And so super fans of the show knew you were kind of talking because to this man. It had- and it makes sense in theory after it's explained that it was an early relationship, but that was yeah. confusing for the viewer. Yeah. And I think it was hard because then like Luke started going around telling everyone I had a boyfriend at the beginning of the season, um, <laughs> which was like just, a, I don't like super upsetting. Um, but yeah, I met this guy two weeks ago. Luke knew about him. Luke called me. was like, why didn't you pick up the phone the day before? I was like, I was in Sag Harbor. And he's like, doing what? And I was like, I was on a date. So Luke came in knowing I had met someone, which also was why I got upset when he came in and out of nowhere was like, well, I like someone. And I was like, oh, you're just trying to play me. You've Mm -hmm. told Sierra all these things about me that I like wanted to date you, which was never true. And I think people took a lot of my tears as like heartbreak. But my tears were anger and frustration of like a guy who just wasn't respecting me and playing me. And we actually had gotten very, very close. So it was like being hurt by just a person in your life that you felt a little manipulated by. By the way, I would have been crying every hour if I was <laughs> filming at the beginning of my quarantine. Like, I don't know how emotionally no, I, Dan, I think it. also yeah. people have to understand the context of the situation. Like that we were, my fight with Kyle was like day, I don't know, like 30 or 35. We're like, I don't know where my marbles were at that point. <laughs> and like, I also wasn't feeling fully understood by the group. Cause like no one wanted to be like, yeah, we agree with Hannah. Cause the next thing you know, Kyle's talking about you behind your back to everyone. So like, I just kind of was feeling on an island of crazy. And then I also was like really missing Des. And I just wasn't allowed to leave. And I didn't really yeah. want- And we were in like the height of quarantine where yeah. it was like- Everyone's a fucking what, mess at that point. Yeah, like what the fuck is going on in the world in general? And like, yeah. you know, we didn't leave the house. We couldn't, we never left. So. Like I went on a walk once and I was like, I feel worse. <laughs> yeah, like you just you start to get a little you stir crazy. We went for a jog and you cramped up after a minute and then we cried. Yeah. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Yeah, literally. Put it on my tombstone. <laughs> uh Paige, oh. what's happening with you and Perry? Are you guys done? Yeah, we're done done. <laughs> done done. Oh my okay. God. Are you um, seeing anyone now? So I'm definitely dating people. I'm not seeing anyone serious. I'd like no one thinks that I'm their girlfriend, but I'm definitely going on a lot of dates. Or everyone um, thinks they're your girlfriend. Yeah, or everyone's like, Paige is my girlfriend. I'm like, I didn't like, save your number. Um, but you were Perry just, you were just in Vermont. Um, mm-hmm. Were you dating anyone in Vermont? I don't know what you were there for, maybe a vacation or something, but 
where you, I, I saw on your I, Instagram that you were on in Vermont. Yeah, I was in Vermont. Um, yeah, I had fun in Vermont. You know, <laughs> interesting. I let I let it let it loose. But yeah, um, and I went on a date a couple. I nights wish we ago. could see we your Vermont last trip. Night. Yeah. Um, what do we have to look forward to this season, the rest of the season? I'm loving Summer House this season. I was a little concerned at the very beginning, and now I think it's the greatest show on Bravo. So what's happening? <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. If, if my, like, um, heightened emotions have given anyone joy, that's that's what this is about, and that's what I remind myself when I go to sleep at night. Um, this season, it gets it gets more violent, um, <laughs> more romance later on, yeah. um, more drunkenness. Paige, what Wait, do you who, think? who does – did Luke and um, – uh, did Luke and Lindsay hook up? I'm obsessed with Lindsay Hubbard too, by the way. I like, I'm we never know. We never got, we never really get to the bottom of it, but like, <laughs> they've always had like a, like a very close friendship. And like, if someone said to me they had sex, I'd be like, yeah. yeah. You know, like if they, if they just texted our group chat right now and they're like, hey, by the way, we hooked up, I'd be like, yeah, no, like, I see that for you guys. But it's so funny watching it back. Like, oh, wait, Paige froze. Oh, there she is. Watching it back and being like, oh, now I understand why Lindsay was so mean to me last winter. Because <laughs> mm, maybe right. she liked him. But I think they'd be a gorgeous couple. Oh, oh my yeah, God, they make yeah, such they beautiful Beautiful babies. blonde babies. Great cheekbones. Yeah. Uh, a l- I feel like who, a lot who, happens. Who was the psychic, though? What, who was the psychic that... What, can you give out the psychic's handle? Oh, my God. She's literally told me, whatever you do, do not give me out. Give my handle out to people. We can't. Just we like, can't. Yeah, we, we can't. can't. We don't want people DMing her because we need her we need for her. our own thing. So we, we need, need to be selfish. Has like, she, has she yeah. been accurate and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah, she's told me some like, I talked to her really just like about myself because I'm a narcissist. Sure. Um, but she's told me some things that I'm just like, no, no, that's crazy. That's not going to happen. And then it happens. Interesting. Um, okay. I, anything you can spoil for me about anything? Like, is there anything <laughs> that you guys think like you you can spoil that you won't get in trouble by Bravo? Um, um, I think in the up, in the rest of the season, I think like you end up seeing a lot of my relationship with Perry, like in terms of how I'm feeling and you know how I get to the conclusion of that we should break up. I guess. <laughs> so it's like a very emotional roller coaster for me. But um, and then you'll see like my relationship with Carl evolve into whatever. And I just I think it's it gets I love really Carl this season, too. I hated Carl before. And now I just want to give him a big hug. I love him. Don't you just I, like, I'd run love, in front of a bus like for him. Kiss now. His face? I, know. <laughs> like, I would run in front of a bus. I would. Like, and I hated he, Carl last season. He was the like calmest person in the house that you can turn to because he was smart he was like i'm not touching this stuff because i have my own shit i need to figure out yeah how does kyle and amanda come back do you see the show happening with kids involved like we can't do it with kids involved like so what happens next season or i mean they can only possibly have one or two more left and i wonder if that's i mean speaking of power and career and everything like that must be a thought in their heads of like if we have a kid I don't think we could should be pregnant in the summer house. Like that seems weird to me. Am I <laughs> reading into that too much? No, I feel the same way. I feel like the whole show would have to evolve into like we're all married with kids. No, and I, I can't just, have that. I don't foresee that. You're not Vanderpump. <laughs> yeah, like right. I just I don't see it happening. Um, so then they just leave the show. I mean, and then I mean, yeah, it just. You can be married and like absolutely rip it in a summer house, but like once yeah. there's once there's a baby, I don't. I'd be like, I mean, it depends. Is the baby cute? Like, do we <laughs> like the baby? Like, has the baby yeah. been talking shit about me? It depends. Like, if the baby's the gonna baby, give me weird looks, has the baby brought up Hannah's dad? And if so, <laughs> get that baby out of here. If so, chuck the baby in the pool. Yeah, so I mean, I could work with the baby. I, Hannah, by the way, in I that Kyle, in that work. Kyle fight, I loved. You were wearing like a sweatsuit, and I don't know why. It just was making me laugh. It was like a full one colored sweatsuit, and you were so emotional. But it was like a pink. Was it pink? <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite outfit. part. That was my relaxing outfit. And then, of course, he comes in the room, and he's like, "We have to talk." And I'm like, "Well, now I have to cry all over my sweatsuit." God damn it! <laughs> and it's the clip that's used like over and over again on like Bravo websites, and Instagram, <laughs> stuff. It's like that's the clip they keep promoing with, and you're just in your sweatsuit. <laughs> Great press for that 
the clothing line. Okay, ladies, <laughs> I've kept you way longer than I expected. I'm so glad we got to do this. Thank you for Thank coming you. by. And I'm sorry, we, we were supposed to do this weeks ago and I was in a very, to be honest with you, a very emotional space. So it was like going through a lot in my life and I had to cancel it. But thank you for, for rescheduling okay. and, and coming by and uh, tell everyone where they could find you and, and Giggly Squad and all of that stuff. Yes, listen to Giggly Squad. We make fun of everything, including ourselves, as we try to do in our life all the time. <laughs> and then Burning in Hell is my mental health comedy podcast where we delve deep to people's demons. And follow me at Being Burns, B-E-I-N-G-B-E-R-N-Z. Watch Chat Room at Sundays at 10 p.m. or 9.30 sometimes. Paige. Summer House is on Thursdays at 9 p.m. And my Instagram is Paige underscore DeSorbo for all your fashion needs. All right, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. This was so fun. Uh, I want to tell everyone, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk soon.